welcome to the channel thank you everyone for tuning in so in today's video we're back looking at the range of homages in particular the proxima px1698 now in case you missed it i didn't unbox two proxima watches a couple of weeks ago where i covered the specifications and dimensions so i'll be putting them up on screen now proxima released this px1698 i believe it was shortly after san martin and pagani design and i did do a comparison between the san martin and also the pd which I believe the San Martin won because that case uh, is really well made. San Martin went totally different. They didn't use recycled cases and they made it a totally new case. Where they were lacking was on QC on the hands, uh, just general tidiness on the dial uh, and a bit of a plain and boring uh, dial. Now, this is Proxima's version. And when I talk about recycled cases, Proxima have done exactly the same. So those of you guys that follow Proxima do know this case has been out for a fair few months um it's a very well made case there's actually nothing wrong with it it's been brushed so well and they've got loads of variants and i would suggest going to the store checking out all the different options available now since then uh, they've released a new bracelet for these watches now since then they have released bracelet options so i covered the px1697 in my last video uh, where the bracelet you know to the case was really well made and this is a bracelet now for this whole px1698 case so good news for anyone who liked the other case and dial options because you have a really well made bracelet so i'll cover more things on the bracelet and more so on the dial i won't cover too much on the case because i feel i've covered this a number of times as i said it's really well made there's literally no issue with that it is 37 millimeters in diameter and it does have a very slim polished bezel so in terms of the bracelet that they've now given us with this case uh, it is brushed really well it is solid and links female links all solid links which do have a screw down um, link design uh, you've also got a really nice taper from 20 mil down to 16 and back up to 18 at the clasp um, so you know i'm really pleased that proxima have decided to give us really well made bracelets now to accompany their watches uh, this is something which they previously were lacking in quite a bit now with this particular one um it is slightly different to the other uh, range of margins that you've seen because they've effectively recycled one of the cases and this is where i think san martin definitely stand out because with their version they gave us a totally different case um, and this is a hell of a case it's made so so well the bezel is just perfect uh, that top hat sapphire crystal etc everything just looks so good uh, it's just a shame about the dial now with the proxima they are slightly different uh you've got it's just slightly darker dial it still is matte you do get a bit of grayness in there but it is just slightly darker uh, and probably a bit close to how you know the original one looks but with the markers with this 14 loom that they've applied uh, you'll notice they are quite a bit larger um compared to the other margins out there so it makes it for an extremely visible watch you've got the text printed just below the 12 automatic just above the six and the arrows have got that layered loom application the handset on the Proxima, and this goes back to Proxima's really good level of QC, um, I can't see any visible imperfections. If you guys recall when I looked at the San Martin in a closer detail and also the Pagani design, they had this edge uh, of flash or bit of burr uh, just on the edge of the hour hand, um, just basically showing, you know, it's something cleanly cut, but with this handset, you don't see any of that. Um, it's been cut very sharply indeed. But with this handset, Proxima have fitted it with a capped seconds hand, uh, which is a nice little feature, uh, just covering up that pinion. Now, on the seconds hand also, you'll notice how long um, that tip is on the end of that baton. Um, and it's quite thick. Again, you know, focusing on legibility uh, and the proportion of the handset is good. I do like how far they extend to that minute track. It is also a no date setup, but you do have a ghost position without a clicking date wheel. So they have gone in, you know, effectively modified the movement slightly, um, but still giving us that ghost position. Now, when it comes to PT5000 movements, um, I think most of you guys know, you know, what they like. Uh, and there is a big talk about the reliability and the actual quality of the movement coming in. I have to say, I do feel somewhat safe with Proxima because they do regulate the movement. They do look at the movement before they send it out. And... I've not had any issues with the PT5000 sent it to me by Proxima. Now, one thing nice about this watch is that crown size. On a few of the others, the crown is very small uh, and quite difficult to operate with the Proxima crown. It's around six and a half millimeters. Um, and I think with this case proportion and size, I think you do need a crown that is quite substantial um, because that gets quite fiddly, uh, you know, when you operate the watch or when you pick up after every few days. Um, but aside from that, you know, I think they've done a very decent job and it all now comes down to, you know, what kind of homage do you like? 
do you wish this was a totally different case or are you okay with uh, you know an older case that they've used uh, and do the visuals match for you guys i've already said it before i don't think that tudor design is for my personal taste um i do find it rather plain do i dare say rather boring um but it's just something which doesn't really appeal to me however the good news is the case, the bracelet, it all, is all really well integrated. The female end links are a great addition, maintaining that very compact 45.5mm log to log. You've got 11.5mm thick case, uh, so you know all the makings of a great sports watch. But it's all down to your personal taste and what you think of, is it the right homage? What should they have done different? Now, in terms of what I can see, I can't see any major defects at all. Um, you know, I've already made you guys aware of what I think about you know the text approximately use some of the fonts etc so i don't want to get into the habit of just constantly repeating myself um but looking at this i think it can definitely grow on you um now that i've had it in hand for a number of weeks uh, initially again wasn't that fussed about this watch but as i've come to uh, you know look at the case brace it together along with this visual um it does seem to grow on me just that little bit more also helps with the clean execution as well and you know good clean qc and i can't see any major issues with that dial so let's go ahead and check out the loom um and then put this on wrist for you guys so for this loom shot i've decided to bring the san martin um, and you can already see there's a clear difference uh, in terms of the handset on both watches both are loomed effectively well and um, there's not really issues there but it's when we get to the actual dial san martin's dial is loomed a lot better a lot more evenly layered um, but whereas the proxima is lacking it's a lot duller a bit patchy as well and i think this is the difference between this 14 loom especially with the bgw9 now we already know there's a difference between like solid c3 and then the 14 c3 is quite a bit duller um, and when it comes to bgw9 giving it that 14 effect uh, it does take away i don't know why i don't know if it's a chemical process etc but this is where we can see san martin is absolutely trumping this proxima in the loom department and this is you know proxima usually give us great loom but they have cut corners uh, on the loom on this particular dial so here's the proxima ps 6098 on my six and a half inch wrist and i've said this before this case bracelet combination is very comfortable it wears really well um, and just you know the light that you can see bouncing off that polished bezel uh, and that very clean execution on the brushing and the whole case it does give it a very nice look it's a very sporty slash slightly dressy look as well um, but of course that dial then takes it back to that tool watch uh, appearance now this is where i think san martin did excel with that case everything was brushed and they gave us very fine thin polished highlights to give us that you know premium effect but i am really feeling this case and bracelet that's really good i just think it's a different dial option that you can probably look at the loom is poor as you guys saw you know definitely should have put a bit more layers on on those hour markers handset is very clean uh, it's been cut well and uh, the quality is there that cap seconds hand you know these are all nice features and also that crown coming at six and a half mil uh, which does make the watch very easy to use um so i don't know what else i can say in terms of um any subjective criticisms um as i've said to you guys before you know i'm not much of a fan of this particular design but overall it's a well-made watch it's a very good attempt at proxima uh, but really i need you guys to tell me what you think about this uh in the comment section below you know how do you feel about this watch and you know what would you do different if you would would you rather they did this dial if anyone's going to do this homage that they also need a case to match it um or are they okay just recycling uh, an older case you know putting one of these dials in there now there is one final bit of QC which I did notice on this bracelet is when you do look at the female end links and you see that side of the link exposed where you normally wouldn't see that it is finished very roughly um, and that is very poor considering it is a female end link and in terms of visibility you know when the watch is on wrist you do have a chance to see uh, that very poor brushing or finishing on those end links um, and yeah and that is I think probably you know the biggest criticism there something which has obviously been missed um you know not been paid attention to the bracelet manufacturer or the person finishing it would have thought yeah just do the a face that's fine but not actually paying attention to the inside of the links which are clearly visible the price point for this is around 218 pounds 220 pounds uh it is up there and for that i would definitely go for a different dial option because i feel there's a lot more done on the dial um you know with the applied hour markers etc really great loom maybe the hologram dial that they have you know awesome you know micro detailed hands uh, i think for 220 
that dial offering is very plain although the case and bracelet are exceptionally good minus the oversight on the finishing on the insides of those links so that's it from me today guys i hope you enjoyed that review uh, and let me know your thoughts in the comments always appreciate what you guys think about the watch that i'm reviewing um, so that's it from me today i'll see you on the next video